Okay, let's go ahead and talk about how to solve a basic algebra equation like this. And what I mean by the word this is we got some fractions going on here, right? So we have the variable up in the numerator, this x, and then we have some fractions. And so what, you know, what's kind of the best path to handle an equation that uh, involves fractions? Basic algebra equation. There's a couple different things here that we can um, uh, do to help us out. But I'm going to teach you here is probably the most, well, in my opinion, probably the easiest approach to doing a problem like this. So you definitely want to stick around because um, solving equations with fractions in algebra comes up quite frequently. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, all your equations aren't going to be like, you know, three Y equals nine. Okay. You start off learning equations with things like this, but then of course they get much more complex. All right. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into this and teach you everything you need to know about dealing with these fraction equations. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive online video-based math help programs there is. It's taken me literally years and years and years. So... Um, if you need uh, to take a full math course or you're in a math course and need super comprehensive video-based lessons, or if you want to see thousands of uh, problems solved uh, via video-based explanation step-by-step, -step, then you definitely want to check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Also, if you've been following me on YouTube, um, you should know uh, that I am strongly emphasize note-taking. Okay. Uh, your quality of your notes, okay? And this comes from decades of teaching mathematics. Your the, your notes is a, one of the best indicators I know of from my personal experience uh, for students. Uh, ba basically, here's what I'm trying to say. Uh, those students who do great in math have great notes, okay? And it kind of reverses true. You take great notes, you're going to do very well in math. So if you want to kind of... Um, get a sense of like, hey, how well you're doing in math, if you're doing the right things, look at your notes, okay? Could you give your notes to somebody else and could that person learn math from your notes? That Your notes should be of that quality, okay? So if they're not, it's certainly understandable because a lot of uh, students, you know, are um, don't work hard enough on their notes. It is a skill, okay? So you, uh, I got some other videos on um, note-taking, all right? importance of note taking, but I like to emphasize in the, uh, your, you know, this in all the videos I do. Now, with that being said, you definitely need something to study from still. So I offer notes. <clears throat> I'm going to leave um, a link to uh, my notes in the description of this video. Uh, those would include uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, trigonometry. So if you uh, need notes, which you do need notes, if your notes aren't up to speed, you can check out my notes there. All right. So let's get into this problem. Now, of course, uh, you know, we're dealing with uh, a, in a basic equation, a basic algebra equation. And let's just think about this just in uh, more simpler terms. So let's get rid of some fractions and let's just think, what if I just had the equation two? Well, let's just erase this, right? Let's just erase this like so, okay? Let's just get rid of the fractions. Now, to be able to handle a fraction equation, my question to you is, could you handle this basic equation right here? Okay, this is what we would call a two-step equation in algebra. So before you can handle equations with fractions, you've got to be able to handle the basic stuff, right? So let's go ahead and just review how to handle something like this. The first thing you want to do is to move um, all your numbers to this side of the equation and have all your variables on this side of the equation. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the equation like so, okay? And then you want to can kind of conceptually add down like so all right now this is there's other formats to solve equations what i'm showing you here is definitely by far the most common and it's the best way to kind of structure your work so when i add down 2x plus nothing is 2x negative 2 plus 2 is a zero so i'm left with 2x over here and then 1 plus 2 is 3 and now that's my first step okay so that's uh, my first step was to get all my numbers on the right-hand side and have all my variables here on the left-hand side. Okay, so now, what do I uh, do here? Of course, I have the problem down, uh, this fraction problem we're gonna do here in a second. Don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and finish up with this guy. So 2x equals three 
what do I do to solve for x? Well, you got it. I got to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x is equal to 3 halves. Okay. So if you're comfortable with, uh, you know, that level of um, difficulty and basic algebra problems, then we can talk about something more interesting like this. All right. So a couple of different things you can do here, right? Let's just look at and kind of analyze what's going on. So I have my variable over here. Okay. So this is 2x over 5. So 2x over 5, you can think of this as the term 2 fifths times x. They're equivalent. Okay. So these two are the same thing. Okay. So if that helps you, you could, could be like, okay, I could, you know, that's two fifths times x minus some number. So I have a number, it's a, in fraction form, but I have to move this over here like that, right? So I'd have to add two thirds to both sides. And then I kind of follow the same steps um, as we did before. Now, you could do that, right? There's nothing that says that you can't. So you can go like this, all right? And we can do all the number crunching and one plus two thirds. So then we end up with uh, two fifths uh, X over here. And then we have one plus two thirds. That's one and two thirds. And we can kind of go from that route. And then we can kind of solve. You need to know how to, to do the problem in that manner. Um, as well, but what I'm going to show you here is just a, a, a way that you we can just kind of more, yeah, I'd say cleanly, more efficiently do this problem. Okay, this is the way I'm going to teach my students so after I taught them more more the long way. Okay, all right. So uh, first of all, I'm like you. I don't want to be dealing with fractions. Okay, if I can get rid of those fractions, I want to get rid of them. All right. So how can I get rid of the fractions in this equation? All right, so I don't want to be mean to fractions, but you know we could be like, all right, let's just get rid of these fractions. You know, you know maybe we get a little bumper sticker, put it on our car. We're against fractions. I'm not against fractions. Fractions are awesome, but you know they're kind of cumbersome to work with, right? So how can I get rid of the fractions here? Well, we're going to use that trusty concept, the LCD. Okay, we're going to think about the LCD. We're like, what do you mean the LCD? We're not this is an equation. We're not adding or subtracting fractions. Well, if we know the LCD, this can help us clear out the fractions. So what is the LCD here? Okay, of all the fractions involved. Well, I have a five, I have a three, and then over here, that's just one or one over one. Okay. So I have to consider um, all these various little denominators and I got to say, okay, what is the LCD? of those denominators, it would be what you uh, said it correctly, it's 15. I know all of you are like, oh yeah, it's, it's 15. If you don't know how to find the LCD, uh, then you gotta really know how to uh, you know, um, do this correctly. All right, I have another video on how to find the LCD, not only with numbers, but with uh, uh, when there's variables involved uh, as well. So many students, you know, with a basic problem like this, can tell me what the LCD is, but if I get, start making the numbers more complex and I throw in some other variable situations, then they, you know, start coming up with like the wrong answers or like, I don't know what to do. Okay. That's not good. All right. So, but of course we're going to just, um, keep it simple for the illustrations of learning how to do this. All right. So the LCD is 15. Okay. So what do I do with this? Well, we're going to multiply the entire equation by the, uh, the LCD, okay? Now, remember, in algebra, okay, I can multiply uh, an equation uh, uh, by any number or divide an equation by pretty much any number without hurting the equation, okay? Because all you're doing is here, for example, if I had 2x equals 4 and I multiply that entire equation by 3, okay, I'm just going to get the new equation, 6x equals 12, okay, which is the same as this equation, okay? So you're not you're not breaking the equation or changing the equation in any form, okay? It's a rule in algebra. Whatever I do to one side, as long as I do whatever I'm going to do, as long as I do it to everything, <clears throat> then I'm going to be okay, all right? So how does this help me? Okay, so here's my LCD, and I'm going to multiply this by each term, Okay. All right, now when I do that, let's see here, 15 times 2x over 5, all right, minus 
15 times 2 thirds, all right, equals 15 times 1. Okay, so let me scroll down here. All right, so 15 <clears throat> uh, times 2x over 5, excuse me, is going to be what? Well, 5 goes into 15, 3, so 3 times uh, 2x is going to be 6x. Or you can went 15 times 2, that's 30, divided by 5, that's 6x, minus 3 goes into 15 right here. Uh, that's going to be 5. So 5 times 2 is 10, or 15 times 2 is 30 divided by 3 is 10, equals 15 times 1 is 15, okay? So now, I just by multiplying by the LCD, okay, I was able to go from this equation here to this equation here, okay? And they are equivalent, okay? So, you know, ask yourself, hey, what would you rather do? Would you rather solve this guy or rather solve this guy, okay? So uh, multiplying by the LCD is uh, by far uh, the best approach uh, to deal with these fractions right up front, okay? We clear them out, and now we simply can go ahead and solve for x here. So I'm going to divide, I'm sorry, add 10 to both sides of the equation and just finish this guy up. So this is going to be 6x is equal to... 25, and then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 6. So x is equal to 25 over 6. And if you've been following me for quite some time, I always uh, suggest that you do not turn your improper fractions into a mixed number. Just make sure they're fully simplified unless your teacher or test or quiz explicitly tells you to do so. Okay, So just leave it as an improper fraction form because, again, if you take this into a mixed number, in other words, you go, oh, okay, 6 goes into 25, that's 4, and you start doing all this mumbo-jumbo to write this as a mixed number, you need to know how to do that. I'm not saying that. Okay, You need to know how to write an improper fraction as a mixed number, but this requires uh, time and additional work, and it also increases the probability of you making an error. Okay, I've seen countless times where students have the right answer as an improper fraction, then they go do all this extra work, and then they make a mistake, and they give me the wrong answer. They're like, oh, it's four and two-sevenths or something like that, and now i got to take points away from them, and I, you know, then there's a sad face. Okay, We don't want that situation. So, again, unless your teacher tells you explicitly, you know, turn all your work in, uh, into uh, mixed numbers, leave them alone. Okay, Just make sure they're fully uh, simplified. Okay, so, again, you know, when you're faced with a problem, Okay, basic uh, algebra problems. You got to make sure you know just the, uh, you know, one and two step, you know, scenarios. Now, there's other approaches to solving this particular problem, but using the LCD to clear out fractions is is excellent. Okay, and this is really comes in handy when you're doing much more advanced algebra equations. So I would suggest start practicing this concept now. But you know, if you you know did this problem a different way and got the right answer, that's fine too. But you need to know how to uh, uh, determine what the LCD is of an equation of all the different terms in it and how to clear out the fractions, okay? All right, so with that being said, again, uh, none of this is gonna stick unless you practice. So you got to reinforce this if you're, you know, um, you know, practicing by doing out your homework and, and um, algebra equations. If that's what you're studying right now, that's great. But remember, you got to practice this stuff, and they also got to put this into your notes. Okay. All right. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up, and hopefully you you um, will subscribe. If you are a current subscriber, I thank you for that. But I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out. So if you're struggling in other areas of math, please check out my other videos. They are there for you. I've been making these videos for 10 plus years. Um, again, you know, uh, you can go to my other uh math resources by just following the links in the description. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.